Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic, and today we are doing another episode of Will It Bot, this time around with this Optimus Prime mask. Now, if you watched to the end of last week's video, you've known what we're about to do for a whole week now. Uh, this guy here I got from playing some arcade games at the Melbourne event, or that were outside the Melbourne event, and yeah, we're going to turn this into an ant weight combat robot. Now, I've already taken the elastic off the back of this thing and I have weighed it and it actually comes in just a little bit lighter than all of this. Now, this is the chassis for my grabber, Juice Monster. Uh, yes, Juice Monster. Uh, and this whole thing here is about 68 grams, I reckon. And this guy is about 50 grams. So that means we've got about 10 grams to add some components in underneath here to actually hold electronics and bits and pieces. Now, as I said before, this is gonna be a Will It Bot episode, so the idea behind Will It Bot is we're going to turn this into a regular combat robot, and the rules are as follows. At the end, it must retain some, at least of its original shape. It must have an active weapon of some kind, and it must fit inside a specific uh, robot fighting category. So in this case, it's gonna be 150 grams, and like I said, this is 50 grams on its own, which is a lot of weight. So I do wanna turn this into a grabber of some variety. The problem here is that I don't think I've got enough weight to put a cut in the uh, mask and then hinge sections of it. Uh, so we're actually gonna go for a slightly unique variation on a grabber. All of the uh, internals are going to be probably hot glued into the bottom of this mask here. And then we're going to actually run a kind of arm in underneath so when the, uh, yeah, when I want to grab something, the arm will retract up to about here and the uh, mask will run on the front and on the wheels. And then when I want to open up, I'm going to push the arm down and that's going to kind of like lever the head up, I guess. So the head is going to be kind of rigidly attached to the body and the whole robot is going to kind of swing up and down to activate the grabber. Now, this is... a, a Probably one of my weirdest ideas for a robot weapon, I think. Uh, but you never know, it might just work. Uh, so yeah, obviously this is going to be the grabber weapon here because we have a nice kind of like internal section here that I can hold on to robots with. So we're gonna mount all of our electronics and stuff right at the back out here, probably as far back as I can get them so that I can get some nice leverage action happening uh, on this mask. Now. Uh, as I said in the end of last week's video too, this video is uh, kind of jumping in front of the uh, combat uh, battle breakdown from ARC's June meet that will come out uh, next week, but I just thought we'd take a bit of a break from doing battle reports and we would do a will it bot. Uh, so let me go ahead and fire up the printer. Unfortunately, you guys aren't going to see that because uh, my Octopi is down at the moment. So I'm going to fire up the printer. I'm going to print some parts for this. And then I guess the next thing you're going to see is me trying to uh, work out how all of the stuff fits in underneath here. <laughs>
So here we go, we have something that kind of resembles a robot packed into the underside of this mask. Now, uh, this was my little idea for using the front of the mask as a kind of wedge or like as a, a grabber, but we have some kind of issues. So I plugged all the electronics in, and if I turn this guy on right now, and then pull the trigger, what happens is that the arm just kind of raises this wheel up off the ground. Uh, we've got bigger problems than that because I've pulled the sticks, nothing else happens, which means that this thing is getting signal, but my uh, H bridge board here is actually not driving the motors around. So that's an electrical fault of some kind, but that, that is most definitely a hardware fault of some kind, which is kind of annoying because that means I need to print probably a bigger kind of hook shaped arm to go on here. And I actually don't know how heavy we are right now either. So let's just do that real quick together here. I'll just turn this guy off so the servo stops jittering around all over the place. And hopefully we can get this scale to power up. Yeah, 150 grams. <laughs> okay, that is not good because that means I don't have enough weight to put a backing plate on here, which means I can't actually turn this into a legitimate combat robot because I have two kind of problems here. One, I can't protect the battery properly because that's the battery there. I can literally just poke that. And also, I can't put a long enough arm on this thing to have it actually grip anything. I think this is actually the first will at the bot that's going to fail because, yeah, Optimus Prime's mask here is just too heavy. Like, this is the craziest, lightest uh, robot chassis that I have ever 3D printed, and it's not enough. Like, it just, it's crazy. I mean, I could probably drop back to six millimeter wheels, but that's not gonna save me enough, I don't think. All right, well, I'm gonna just off camera, see if I can do some stuff to maybe get this guy working, and then we'll see what happens. It works, I got it working. So just quickly, I'll update you on the changes. The wheels have been swapped over for much smaller wheels. Those old wheels were like 10 grams each. So they were taking up a lot of weight. And then we've added a much longer arm on the servo with a little crook at the end of it, just to give us a little bit more leverage. And I've changed over the H bridge board at the back. Obviously I need to actually put a back plate on here so that it's not just got its guts spewing everywhere. But if we turn it all on, it actually does the thing, look! Whee! <laughs> so it kind of sort of works as a grabber. I think I'm gonna to need to glue something out the back as a bit of an outrigger to stop it like going completely up and over top of itself. But if I just like feather it a little bit, it doesn't normally tip over too badly. <laughs> uh, either way, it is kind of the stupidest thing I've ever built in my life. Uh, <laughs> And it is really awesome. All right, so hopefully the next thing you guys see is me fighting with it.
So there we go. Uh, it actually did pretty well on the whole. Uh, for a robot that was kind of thrown together in a week while I was doing a lot of other things, having just been at a couple of robot events, uh, yeah, it did pretty well. It won its first three fights in a row, which is kind of incredible. I mean, it was in a non-destructive B-League, um, so that did help out quite a lot in that regard. But yeah, it helped out. It, it did work quite well. I mean, I did have to... Uh, give Optimus a little like goatee here as a bit of an anti-roll mechanism um, Yeah, but at the end of the day, I'm quite happy with that. It worked way better than it probably should have It would definitely work way better than it had any right to uh, Yeah, so <laughs> look at that. That was good um, Yeah, so obviously this weekend I also had the actual ARC fight So I just put this in the non-destructive league at ARC uh, so there was also other actual fights that I went through and did, but you'll see how I went in those next week. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and I will see you next week for that ARC breakdown.